The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost. But with force and cruelty, you have ruled them. Nowadays, you hear people doing all sorts of what I like to call foolishness. You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. No, God doesn't move like they that. They are greedy dogs, which never have enough. And they are shepherds who cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his own gain, from his own territory. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. You go and close that nonsense! You call George. My flock became food for every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Nor did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. And if you can't find it in the word of God, and if you can't find it... Behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my Whenever flock. I look at the church today, we don't even understand how the devil functions. Satan functions by making us break instruction. The game remains the same. All these preachers will tell you, and when you ask them, why are you teaching people about the devil? Why are you telling them about green demon, black demons, monitoring spirit, and monitoring lizard, all this nonsense? Why? They will tell you the Bible says, we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Shut up, shut up, shut up. You are even practicing his devices. What's the devices? Keep them in darkness. Keep them in ignorance. Tell them about me and they will not know their God. And so long as they don't know their God, they cannot be strong and do exploit. The days of skinny sheep are over. Jesus is fattening them up through his servant, Apostle Richard E.S. Taki. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken, and strengthen what was sick. I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. Now we bring to you a live service from the Apostolic Center of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries, Nairobi, Kenya, ministering under God. Apostle Richard E. S. De came. Sit, relax, and participate as we make ready our people prepared for the Lord. It's a front of carnality. Yes. Those. Wait. Okay, I've not used this glass before. Jesus, wisdom. So, so the ones of carnality that just thought that just jump up in the flesh. They don't feel, oh, that is where the best husbands are and, mm. and stuff like that. Mm. So address those ones first before uh, we now go about destiny. Okay. Um, uh, oh, daddy, I'm scared. <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> Out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Yeah. Okay. Um, marriage, first of all, is not something that you wake up one day and say, oh... I will wake up and get an ogaman because everyone seems to want ogaman with some money. It's it's something that God is the one that ordains it. So you don't wake up in the morning and say that I want to go to Nigeria because I want to find a man there. Even here in Kenya, they are here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did not mean my, I did not meet mine in Kenya, and I also did not go to look for him. Mm. I, I believe it was destiny. Because when I finished school, my parents took me to South Africa to study. Mm. And it is at the moment that I arrived in South Africa, this man also arrived in South Africa. Wow. That is the strangest part, in 2001. Wow. So that is how we met. Mm. But I did not go to get married. I went to study. To study yeah. But funny enough, this man, the moment he met me, he told me that you will be my wife. Wow. I was like, look at this man, who are you? Wow. He said, you are going to be my wife. We separated even for... You know, we in Nigeria, we like possessing our possessions. Exactly. We don't, we don't joke. That is what he did. We don't, we don't dance around. Yes. Once we see it... He, he possessed me. <laughs> I told him this man... I was very young, by the way. I was 20 years. Wow. I think 18, 19 wow. years. Thank so, you. So, I had... I yeah. found it strange. Okay. But he knew that I was that woman after God's heart. Mm -hmm. I was a prayerful woman. Wow. I'd always because we were introduced to Christ when we were twelve years. Mm -hmm. wow. So you remember you met me with a Bible and you said, This girl, you are carrying a Bible. You are going to be my wife. Wow. 
But then my husband is different. He didn't know God at all. Yeah. So I don't know what he was looking for. Mm. For a woman who knows God, for maybe that coverage, you understand? So not that he knew God. Me, I, I, he was looking for somebody to cover him, his mm. devious ways. He was mm. a devious man. Mm. So, but me, I was this prayerful woman. So he wanted, when he's devious, there's God there is a God to cover him when he's doing this. <laughs> that is why you always say, my wife prays for me. Yeah. Despite where I go, I know she will pray Amen. and things will be sorted. Wow. But that is not supposed to be your Maybe aim. that was also what led to his salvation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that is, that is not supposed to be what your aim is. It's not about marriage. Mm. For me, it, it, it never was because, number one, my mother and father separated mm. when we were young. So I did not believe in marriage. I didn't want to hear anything wow. concerning marriage. Wow. I just grew up but then the church that I used to go to as a child, I used to admire married couples with married families with children when they came to church. I always admired that and I say to God, one day this will be my portion. But I did not know that God made those arrangements long time ago mm -hmm. without even me knowing. Mm -hmm. So for ladies, that should not be your aim. That you, it should not even be in your mind. Sorry, please. Mm -hmm. Can we get the... They are all sodas. Is it that you, did they give you before you came? No, we didn't. Where are these guys sharing? Can we have their own soda, please? You you put it. You bring it so that we can open it. They can be taking it while we are talking because we have some more minutes. So is it Coke or Fanta? Fanta. Okay, get us two bottles of Fanta. Yeah, bring it. I don't know where is Alif. Okay, where is any man? <laughs> Do you know how to open this one without breaking? Do you know how to open this? Oh, yeah, come. Open it for me. You don't use opener. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You can. So it's open. Really? Okay. Can, can we open this? Open. Oh, you have opened. Okay, take. Yes. Thank you. Okay, we can continue. Yeah. Like, like I said, for ladies, that should not be in your mind because, one, I will tell you this, that while still married to him, even not long ago, before he became fully saved, I once told him that, baby, if you do not change your ways, I'm willing to let you go and go with God. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to let this marriage go. That is to tell you that the focus was not on the marriage, yeah, but the love the that I had for God was mm. more important for me because I saw that whatever he was doing was, was going to ruin my family, was going to ruin the destiny of my children. So I told him, if you don't get saved, we are divorcing. If you don't go back to God, I am letting you go because I've carried this burden for long and Sorry. I don't want to carry it anymore. I want you to be in the Lord. But because my husband loved me, he said, if you can choose God over me, then I'll have to follow your God. Wow. That is how can you put your hand together for such? Awesome. Repeat that statement. If you can love, if you can love God over him. Yes. Wow. Ask him. I, I wish there was a video. I packed his clothes. I told him you are going. If you are not changing your ways and surrendering to God, we are separating today. Wow. Because me... I'm suffering because of because me I love God. I don't want to do your ways. I want to do God's ways. But if at all I have to sacrifice this marriage, if we are not meant to be, let it go. Because for me, I don't believe that as a Christian I need to suffer like this. Mm. It only took coming here to reveal to him that for sure this suffering in our marriage is because of the carnal ways that he was living. So point. it was not to me about the marriage or about an ogre man. Let him go. But of importance is that which is in my spirit. My life with God, how is it? I told him, baby, I've packed your stuff. Choose either me, these children, God, or you continue with those your deals that you are busy doing. He said... I've surrendered. He fell down on the floor and he said, take me to your mother. Wow. God. Put that together for Jesus. It so it's not about... You know, this thinking. is... Uh, this this looks like a missionary marriage. You get my point? Yes. A missionary marriage is where God used the safe couple mm. to save the other safe couple. Mm. And if you look at the way this one starts, 
like what you said, they all arrived in South Africa together and all of that stuff. So which means those ladies in Kenya here yeah, that could you think that you can just go to Nigeria and pick a yes. husband. Yes. Please kill it. Do you hear, do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. But if destiny arrange it, if destiny arrange it to be beautiful, like I said. There's, there's a prophecy already. If destiny arranges it to be beautiful, but do not allow the flesh, yes. the carnality of the flesh, yes. to drive you into that direction. Yes. You could end up with something that you will not like. That's true. Honestly, for, for the rest of your life. Because, because there, there, are a lot, there are a lot of stories also yes. where our guys use the ladies here they, to do a whole lot of bad things. They do it a lot. Okay, Africa. yeah, let's hear. Yeah, so probably you. most of our guys, I think the microphone is sounding. Okay. Yeah. Is the microphone was okay? Is it okay? Can you hear us? Yeah, so definitely like assuming like when we are in South Africa, most of the guys that is actually intending to get involved with women are not actually coming to the women okay. based on love. So that relationship is on their personal interest to make profits. Like you can find out some people are dealing on drugs. And they wanted to get a woman as their wife to be using to send to overseas to take out things and pay them. Wow. So for their interest of benefits of profits and all that. Mm. So but now on my own situation on my No, day, before you go to your own. Yes. Because there's a point you have raised yes. which is very important that we educate people yes. about. Because I have come to realize that an average Christian lady is naive. Yes. This issue of divine favor make ladies stupid that is true sir yeah it's so true because you go to the internet mm. and some of them meet them online you go to the internet and before you know uh, you maybe you have prayed in church like we had service today yes. talking about husband yes. somebody now meet with the folly you now say it's favor yes. and with your innocence you don't even suspect that the world is that wicked mm. and how do you guide uh, what will you say that can guide an innocent christian lady like that that maybe how not to fall into the trap of such people. So let us know some of the antics. Yeah, so coming to your question on what to guide the people not to fall into the traps of the enemies. Mostly people seduce people with the little things they see with their eyes, those metals the enemy took their souls. Mm. Like uh, maybe flashy things, taking them out for good things. But eventually not all that glitters are gold. Mm. Because I found out in some of my friends that got involved in those kind of scenario, the ladies that got into them enjoyed the beauties of the world that they have within. But as time goes by, you find out that those homes are completely broken. Mm. Some of them are sick. Some wow. of them lose totally. That some, some of the women? Yeah, some of the women. Are then, sick? Yes, are wow. sick. And now you find out, before you could know it, that thing you are calling that you want to use this person for your financial benefits. You notice that children are already involved with oh time. Oh my God. So now children being involved, you don't know, it's like a cage. You don't know how to pull out yourself from it because of the bond of the little children that is involved. So before you know it, the woman might start using the same drugs. Mm -hmm. They are selling, the guy is in the streets using the same stuff. And the children are all stranded. You find that most of the kids are taken to the shelter homes and all that. Oh so it's a complete destruction from the enemy. So, so what the average uh, innocent lady sh should, to, should not do, don't be carried away yes. by, by the flashy stuff yes. that uh, maybe people... The guys are seducing them with, yes. Giving you what you want. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah, but when you say no to that, you need to carry your Bible and get to know what the word said. Mm. That is the only thing that can save people right. from such yeah, You have something I to say? I to add that. Yes. Um, what mostly makes women fall for them is they, they use the name of God a lot. Okay. They will use the name of God in anything. They are not ashamed to use God's name. And a lot of people fall for that because they say he's a man of God. And, uh, and this is very important yes. because the Christian lady here yes. is also godly. Yes, God exactly. God. So the so language of the, of the, the, of the language. Of God, so the language every, of God, the language yes, of Christian. Everything they say when they complain, they, God bless you, you know, everything about it. So is that might make you to lower your guards. Yes, you exactly. Fair, you are dealing you with. for the trap because okay. you now believe that this man and even if you look at the messages, somebody else will also see this man is, is from God. Look at, he even talks about God a lot. But you know what? They don't fear God. 
they just use the name of God to obtain whatever they are looking for. That is what I always say, even, even when my husband used to do all those crazy things, he used to call God's name, and I will be telling him, why should you even mention God? Because you don't have respect for God. That, which and means, people sorry, still fall for them. Yeah, which means the way out is actually deep discernment. Yes. Because, because if, exactly. if you look at it, somebody who is superficially mm. looking at the religious language yes. can easily fall into it. Yes. But somebody who has a deeper discernment yes. to see beyond the coverage. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. That discernment is very important. You remember uh, that lady we met, he made this line on the, this guy online and this guy was promising her, I'm going to marry you, I will mm. come down to Kenya. Mm. She was about selling her father's land. You yes. remember? Okay, so yes, we came I really, remember. That is it. That yeah, was it's true. To, to, to pay for the flight ticket yeah. of the man. We're, we're the one that stopped her. her. Yes, we stopped we're, her. We, we, we told her that a Nigerian man that wants to marry you, mm. you don't send flight ticket to the person. Mm. He's the one that will be spending money on you. Money. Uh, exactly. So we stopped her. Yeah, I remember that story. We stopped her from uh, sending, from selling her father's land yes. to send flight ticket to the guy. Yes. So when she listened to us, the guy actually came to Kenya mm. only for her to discover that he's almost as old as her father. <laughs> but the guy was using an old picture on Facebook to confuse her. <laughs> to confuse her. Yes. So what we are trying to say is that matters of marriage are matters of the spirit. Yes. So they should not be born in the flesh not at all, all, at all. And that is it. Pastor, there is another thing that I wanted to contribute on this. Like most times, like when I was in the world, yeah. I used to be a Christian, I go to church, but I could call it now a religion. Because doing bad things, you don't have that feeling that whatever you are doing is wrong before God. All right. So when you are now doing those things and you met a, like she was actually saved and she knows the consequences of doing things that is against God's will. Mm. So whenever she's talking, then I'll be asking her, do you think you know God more than myself? And I was being <laughs> sincere, thinking that it's the same God that we serve, that whatever I was doing was not wrong. No, there's a point you which is very important. You yes. say, when you are doing bad things, you don't know. Yeah, that, that it was bad. Well. Yeah, that's of course true. And she knows the consequences. And she kept warning me about that, but I could not really understand what she was talking with him. That, that, is, that is a It's strong only point. when we came to cry of the spirit that I see now the difference between mm. the two. It's, that you tremble before the things that is wrong against mm. God. It's true yes. because um, the people he was doing those bad things with, they would prosper. That is the prosperity of the wicked. Of, of the wicked, but yes. they would pray. Until I'll be asking myself, am I not praying? Because this, so you would think that is God yeah, prospering them. Prospering them. Me, I'm the one who is not being so. You know, for that they have overpowered me mm. because me, I'm alone. I'm still telling them that whatever you are praying, you're making noise. Shut up. And, and yeah, they will show you the result. I don't have anything. We are praying and we are having money. They are bringing big cars. They are roaming around with big, big cars. They are talking money. You know, they are throwing money all over. You know how Igbo can do. Mm. But me, I don't have any. Anything. So me, I keep telling them, I don't, then they will say, you and this, your business, is, there's no, nowhere you are going, this is the real business. So I'll be asking myself, am I not praying? But those people can pray and break this roof with the prayer. So I'll be like, this God. So and yet says, what they are doing is wrong. Yes, and what they are doing is wrong. And they will be going to Venus Chapel. Eh? So I'll be like, am I the one who is not praying? Because, and then the, this when you see, you see, you see, they are making progress. You are the only one who doesn't listen. So I'll be like, am I the only one who is, which God am I praying to? Why am mm. I not prospering? But these wicked people are busy prospering. If you see offering that they are giving, big envelopes like this in church, me, I don't even have any. And yet the I money tell came. them, I don't want to put this your dirty money on the altar of God. Wow. I don't believe in it. Wow. I don't want to touch it. Don't, don't don't tell me about that money it's not money that is right but then when they put it there tomorrow they are prospering more and me i'm going back to zero so, so the I reason mean, they are sorry to shut you down the reason they were prospering is that both the couples agreed in one thing yeah. but we are now different people in the spirit I get like point. yeah what, light and darkness yeah so what mixture that, Whatever that other people do a little that was in the line of business I was doing, they got millions within a short period of time and things will blossom. That is actually not the prosperity of the righteous, which mm. I didn't know then. Mm. So, but because of herself being on the knees praying, 
when I go to the same land, instead I'll get something huge, it will be very tiny. Mm. So I kept on asking myself, sometimes you have issues with that. Now what is happening that you are not actually allowing me to be able to do? <laughs> you called me the devil. You used to say so I'm the devil. See her as that, an enemy. I'm the devil. <laughs> that behind every evil say behind every successful man is a good woman, but you are not a good woman. Look at you. You are the devil that is not making me to prosper. My fellows are prospering, they're buying big big cars, but you every day you are praying against me. But I was not praying against me. I was praying for his soul's yeah. salvation. And God was like care. shutting down the prosperity of the weekend. Constantly, yes, yes, exactly. Wow, Until wow. God made sure that anything he tried, it did not succeed. That is when we went back to zero. I told him we'd rather be on zero and mm. sleep on the floor. But you wait upon the Lord. Mm. That is the time he fully surrendered and tell me, take me to Apostle Takin. Wow. That is the time. Wow. Wow. God is, God is awesome. Yeah. Now, the last thing I want to ask before we give room for other couples okay. is uh, from your marital experiences, because yes. we've spoken in the area of uh, cross-cultural marriage, yes. like um, what what you have, um, what you are. Your own is cross-cultural. So, so in case there's somebody who is going to marry, maybe from Nigeria or any other tribe, any other country, by destiny. Yes. So, what counsel will you give? If I begin with you, what counsel would you give such a person on how to stay in the marriage and um, succeed in it? Because there are challenges of cross-cultural, yes. traditional challenges, the upbringing, issue of food and stuff like yes, that. Yes, yes. Be, 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 be very prayerful. Be very, very prayerful because where I come from, a totally different culture from my husband. But then... Like I said, my background with marriage is not so smooth. My husband taught me a lot about marriage, despite him being a funny person. But um, his perspective, which I can say it's, it's the Nigerian side, the way they handle marriage, the way they look after marriage, the way he treats a wife is totally different from what we have in Kenya. The, the culture is different, but then you try to understand. I think, to, to me, I feel like he's adjusting more to my culture than me adjusting mm. to his culture. Because mm. for me, I don't see, I only see good things from the Nigerian side. This is a man who can wash your clothes. This is a man who can Come. wash dishes. Clap for us, clap for us. No, 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 in Kenya, we didn't know that. In Kenya, men don't do that. They, they look at you as, what is going on here? But Nigerian man can, if you say, baby, I'm sick, he will wash clothes. He will, mm. he will, he will be there to, when you are giving birth. He will, he will he, you know. In the hospital. In the hospital, yeah. standing there with you, looking at you, giving birth to his child. Mm. He, the way, the, the, the type of culture that is in Nigeria is very different from us in Kenya. So you, as you, you, you stay with that person, try to learn. Mm. Try to learn their own side of things. I'm not very good at cooking Nigerian food, but my husband has never complained. Instead, he mm. buys them and cooks by himself. Wow, wow. You understand? He will, he will say, I'm making okra, I'm making a goosey, and we all eat together. Wow. Not because I'm, I'm, I'm a lazy woman, but because that is, that is his yeah, upbringing. Yeah, that is how he was brought up. Yeah. If I'm tired, I can't sweep, he will sweep. He doesn't have issues with those kind of wow, things. Wow. Because of, and a lot of people from my tribe, when they come and, uh, and, and, and find that, they, they, they laugh. They laugh at him. They laugh. They say, hey, Cynthia, you, who did you marry? This, your man is very different. Because for, the, for us, the, 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 the man, if he breathes fire, you run. <laughs> But for them, I see it's different because they, they are willing to, 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 to assist each other. So I've adopted to that culture, yeah. which he has also adapted to mine, yeah. which at least it's, it's working out balance. for us. Yeah. There's a balance for us. So wow. it's very important to try and balance that between the two of you wow. as a married couple. Understand his side, then he can also understand. When you understand each other, the two cultures, the new people will live peacefully. But then when you start bringing out your culture and your people and you bring them into this marriage the union will not go anywhere mm -hmm. but when you leave other people out and say this is just the two of us there will be no any other person to come and bring in the oh in our and, culture we don't do and, this and this thing you are saying is, yes. is very important because you already saw a culture yes we are 
they, they can wash the wife's clothes. They yes. can cook food. Yes. They, they don't uh, behave like king of kings. Yes. Very true. Very true. <laughs> so now, if you have allowed a third party, mm. he will have talked him out of that kind of a life. Very true. And telling him, you are you are disgracing yourself, or maybe you are spoiling this woman or stuff. Yes. And one thing about being who you are not, you end up becoming a beast. Very true. You get my point? In a, in a bit, not to be the useless man, mm. you now forgo what you know as your culture. So it was very important that you build that defense. Yes. Yeah, very true. It has helped a lot. Because, and, and I'm, I'm happy because from the word go, from the time we got married, he told me that uh, they grew up with a lot of relatives in the house and all that. So he does not want to have that mm. because it will lead to a lot of things in the marriage so he would prefer if we are just us and the children wow, and it has wow, really worked wow, well wow. for us awesome. yeah because introducing a third party will bring a lot of issues mm. what i like about my husband is we will tell him something about his wife he will tell you no 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 you will have to say it when she's around wow. because we are not even when we were still dating no, just almost married. He would still, like I said, he possessed me before he married me. He would <laughs> tell somebody, I cannot make this decision without my wife, wow. which I found it odd Strange. because <laughs> in Kenya we don't do that. <laughs> A man will just say, I decided and I brought it. You understand? Yeah. But him, he will say, I cannot do it without my wife's wow. consent. Wow. So wow. by the time you get there, they will say, Oh, you are the wife. We were waiting for you for this decision <laughs> to be made. And I was young, so I was the one we were waiting for. <laughs> if you see the person they are waiting for is a twenty-year-old girl. <laughs> so yeah, that culture, wow, that, awesome. that culture thing, it's working. But you have to understand each other and don't introduce another party at wow. all, at all. Wow. Leave them out. Let every, we we know how we met, so let everybody deal with their own. If you don't agree with this culture, there's a lot of people that still. Even my mother was oh, Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, I refuse this issue. She had to fly all the way. Wow. And when she came, when my family told her, this man, we have never seen a man like this one. Wow. Please, mommy, allow this young girl to marry this man. And, that wow. is, and they became best friends until her death. Wow, let's put that together for them. Okay, sir. So let's hear your own. The challenge of marrying cross-culturally as a man. Yes. Yeah, the challenge I can say that is um, cross-cultural marriage is... Uh, the culture like she said there are things the kenyans do that we actually don't do from nigeria which by law of being in the center of that marriage and god you have to tolerate one another according to that understanding of love because you want to keep things strong because to me most of the people that you find the divorce that is very common is just little things that trigger divorce mm -hmm. the things that trigger divorce is agreeing and disagreeing at the time without making a final understanding. This is what I really want. Because I come from a background that my parents are both married until they took them apart. Mm. So from that culture, I find out it's very important not to lay hands on two women. Mm. And like the first time I met her, I told her that I would not like to, once we get committed into this very relationship or union, that definitely I would like it to last the way my parents did. Wow. wow. So that Can is... Can we put them together for that? Because, you know, you know, that is very real these days. As in, like, I used to talk about, you know, we have the older generation husbands and the new generation husbands. The one of the, the current days. They don't have this kind of philosophy. The philosophy of, we are in this thing forever. You get my point? We are in this thing forever because you know when you come into a marriage without that mindset, we are this thing forever. A little thing, you are out. Yes. A little thing, you are out. And, and this is very commendable for him from the onset to let the wife know this is for life. Yes. And that, that will set the tune for everything. You get my point? Yes. So that was the reason that there is nothing like bossy on it. Like when she became sick because I know she's part of me. She's mm. my body already. Mm then I'll be able to do whatever that is needed when my kids are still young because I don't need to invite mm. a stranger like a house to come point. and start doing it. So wow. I cook when the, uh, the issue warrants that I can do that because that is doing it for me as well when she is sick. And like when she gives birth and giving delivery to the... Let's children. put that together for that. That's commendable. 
I make sure I come to the hospital before she give birth to bond with the little baby. Wow. And that is why I'm bonding. And eventually, some of my friends that got married in a wrong perspective, they left their women in search of money, which that bond actually mm. cut off. And before they could come back, other things have break forth in the family, which is not right. Wow. So what I've decided through the time I got married to her till date until life takes us apart is that I will ever be with her. Not that we don't have issues. Sometimes the there are hassles that came in. Yeah. No, but, but, but the point is that first statement, yes. we are in this for life, yes. that alone will help you manage whatever issues. Amen. Because like, like I, I spoke about crisis management. Yes. It's very important because that, that mindset alone can deal with any crisis. Yes. I don't know God actually when that mindset came, but that was what I have in my spirit. That came from parenting. Yes, from you my see parents. see why yes. we spoke about parenting? Yeah. If your parenting is not proper, it will affect your marriage. That is true. Your parental upbringing tells you this is for life. Yes. So that now established the platform. Yes. So whatever crisis now comes in, you know this crisis should be extinguished. Yes. We because we have out. a vision mm. to be here forever. Amen. Yeah, so we make sure we sort out any issue that comes out in the family before the next day comes mm, over. Wow. Because the moment you leave it to develop, that is where hatred, bitterness, and problems that brings divorce comes in. Wow. So we settle before the next day comes in. Wow. And that is what has been carried Did you, did you hear that principle? Yeah. The married and the single. Settle before. Let's put our hands together for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, sir, we really appreciate you for the few you've shared, and yeah. I believe that we have learned. I hope everybody has learned something from you. So let's put a hand together for them as we invite the next couple. God bless you, sir. Thank you, yeah, Daddy. You're welcome. Thank you, Daddy. You're welcome. God bless you. Yeah. Can we keep clapping, please? As a... God bless you, sir. Yes. God bless you, Rishi. Well, then uh, we want to invite. Uh, the one on white. You and your wife to come. Yes. Yes. So the couples, put hands together for this couple as a couple. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Just come by faith. <laughs> God bless you. Yes, God bless you. You can sit. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Uh -huh. Are you okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, this is the first time you are coming on TV. I just shock you. <laughs> okay, this is your mic. <laughs> That's the Bible say be ready at all seasons. <laughs> now, um, the last. Uh, couple they actually help us in the area of cross-cultural marriages if not for the time i would have loved to ask more questions maybe, maybe I, we should bring them on one of the tv programs is that not yeah. so, so that we, we talk about that in depth uh, maybe one of those shows maybe the world queen or whatever so we bring them in we talk about it in depth because this issue of cross-cultural marriages need to be understood perfectly now let's talk about um introduce yourselves Yes. Okay, I'm Pauline Nelly Okot. He's my husband. Uh, I'm a lawyer. And he's a... Okay, you are a lawyer. Yeah, he's oh, a lawyer. Oh, that is beautiful. He's a lawyer. L raised to power two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is Stephen Okot Odwar. Yeah. And she's my wife. I've been married for 25 years. Wow! 25 years! From 21 to 25. How many of you are 25 years old? <laughs> Praise God. Which means you have some you have uh, something to say. Now tell us, let's begin with you. How how do you feel enjoying your marriage for 25 years? Okay. I can say that yeah, the Lord has been our strength. Yes. Before that, we were not strength. Are you hearing her mic? Okay. The Lord has been our strength. It, the problem is not from you. Okay. Yes. Uh before we came to Christ, we are not we are married, we are not saved. We just were cutting up, you know, just know. So when we came that? to Christ, we found Christ. That's why God has been our strength for these fires brought us. Okay, it has not been easy, 
but God has helped us. Yeah, what I God. yeah the point what I'm asking is okay that that uh, because not everybody have your kind of feeling. Okay, yeah. Not every woman have the feeling of being with a man for 25 yes, years. Yes. As a uh, compare it with those who are moving from one man to another, mm -hmm. and you we stable in one. So what will you say about that? Okay, is there more blessing in staying in with yeah. your one man that God gave you or yeah. changing them like piece of no, cloth? It's more blessing okay. to stay with one man. Okay. Yeah. And and one one thing I can add that it's better to be you be faithful to your husband. When he marries you, uh, don't be moving around with other men because that will break your your, your marriage. And okay, you know, right now there are some more diseases. There are some diseases. What is the noise? Are, are you hearing? Okay. Okay, right now, it's not safe for a woman who is married to move with other men because there are some diseases you can bring to your husband and it's not good for you, man. So you have to stick to your husband and you'll be faithful to your husband. You'll be prayerful for God to help you with that marriage to continue in God's way. That's all I can say. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yes. What will you advise young men? Because you stay with one, man for, one woman for 25 years. So I believe you belong to the older generation husbands. So what will you advise the younger generation about stay with a woman for one, for 25 years? Yeah, first, for, my first advice would be for the young men, maybe the one who have not married, yeah, they should not hurry. They should wait upon the Lord. And for the married ones, like uh, husbands, they should be faithful to their wives. And they should take care. If I, if I, if I say care, I mean 100% I mean care of their spouse, making sure that everything is on the husband. <laughs> yeah, so that has really helped me. And also I want to say that, uh, yeah, it's true, you're not married when you're still in the, in the world. But uh, I thank God because when I got saved, it was through an encounter. Mm. That, is in, uh, what, that was in the year 2006. So since that time when I got saved, uh, I've been wanting to, I mean, make my marriage, you know, bring it to God. But it has been difficult because of the charlatans, you know, the churches. Yeah. <laughs> there was, there was, I mean, there was no church that was willing to, you know, was, I mean, was willing to teach us about, you know, the ways of God. Yeah. Uh -huh. So until I came, the crowd of the spirit, and that's where now everything was done. And uh, I want to say also this: when I came to you, yeah, and uh, you gave me one of the members to go and uh, make sure that I pay my dowry. So you combined me home. So what really happened after that? What God did when I went to pay her dowry, God supplied everything, which I means that I'm the one who took care of everything, everything even mm. back home there. Put her hand together yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. So you, God supplied, like we always say, when you take position, God will always make the provision yeah. available. Everything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, okay, which means, now, we, we, one other thing I wanted to say, how does a marriage outside Christ because you have tested outside Christ mm -hmm. and, uh, and outside Christ there was no bright price there was nothing when you came into Christ you now realize you are supposed to pay bright price for things so tell us the difference between a marriage outside Christ and a marriage in Christ I can only use one word outside Christ is thinking okay inside Christ is glorious wow yeah. okay <laughs> put that together for that Yes. Okay. What I can say, I'll, okay, me before uh, my husband <coughs> was supposed to, okay, to pay for my bright price, I was among the women who were saying I don't need to be paid bright price. Okay. Because, because, <laughs> said, talk so much. Because because I, we I, need I, more from yeah. that. You said you are among those that say we mentioned up. Okay. Because I had friends, okay, don't mention the tribe. Uh, they were saying there's no need for you to be to be okay to, your husband to take uh, pay, me to pay bright price for you we, we can okay raise money you take money you go and give your mothers a bright price without any man so I was for it because I was saying ah, 
there's no need for me to be paid bright price by my husband because if those women can survive and, and, and get some money and take to their parents at home for bright price without, their, without okay, any man. So I was for it. But when we came here, God changed my mindset. And I say thank God for that dead mom, for the teachings. He taught us that a woman is supposed to be paid bright price before, before she's married. But us, we were outside before <laughs> before that so i thank god for that dad but out there there are so many men who want, who are saying i don't need to be paid right but i can pay for myself what? i can just go home and okay i can work get money i go and give my dad and mom at home as the bright yeah, price yeah, it's a bright price but that is that is that is really dark that is really blindness okay let's put time together for that now sorry there's something i want to say before you go before i call in the next Okay, I thought they have escaped. Okay, because the place is becoming empty. Okay. Now, now, what I want to say, people have asked me questions. People that were in your kind of um, a relationship where there was no bright price because you believe that a woman should not be. So they came into the light. So they are now asking, should they continue the marriage or should they scatter or stuff? So tell us the, between the process that you discovered that you're supposed to pay bright price. And the process that you paid, how was the journey? As in, in the light of the question I asked, so maybe you will. Okay. First, I'll say that uh, the journey was not uh, quite smooth because when I came to the Club of the Spirit, that was the first time that I was hearing about I have to pay the price. So the first time that I was hearing that I was living in cohabitation. I thought that cohabitation is marriage, so I have to differentiate. So I can only say by the grace of God, uh, I prayed, and when I heard the word, so I prayed to God and God provided, so I was able to. But uh, I can say that uh, if, you are, if you are married in that system of cohabitation for a man, and you have lived for many years, when you are told that you have been living in cohabitation, it becomes very difficult because it seems as if the seed of living cohabitation has fully grown. So a lot of men will say no, so they run away. But uh, I want to say that uh, it's only by the grace of God that it enables me to look forward and say I have to you now make my marriage right. So I have to follow every teaching. And that's how I overcame. So there was, because there are people in the crowd of the spirit, though, mm -hmm. they are no longer, I drove them away. <laughs> because they were insulting me for asking men to pay bride price for their wives. Yeah. What do you have to say about such, such minds? I can just say those are the lost. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> because, just lost. Yeah, for, for a man not to see it honorable, to pay the bride price of his wife. What do you think? I think those are just wicked men. I can just say wicked men. They don't have a future. They don't uh, know where they are going, where they're coming from. So it's just really sad. Yeah. Now, your own question. How did you feel when your bride price was paid? Okay, what I can say, Dad, when I heard the teachings about bride price, okay, I was happy because I knew the truth. But before, I was... I, how I can manage myself, get some money, and go and give my parents at home. <laughs> but since I had the teachings here, the crowd was pretty ministry. I thank God. I was happy and say, God has done for me. I'll just do the way the, the word is telling me to, to telling us to do. Okay. Yeah. No, what I'm, okay, let me ask it in another way. When the bride price was not paid, you didn't say anything wrong. I remember. But when it was not paid, what kind of a feeling do you feel as a wife? As a wife and, and, and as a woman, what are the feelings? Oh, what I felt that as a woman. Maybe that day they were paying it and you were watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very happy. I said that, okay, I was happy. Uh, now I knew that I, I'm a, okay, what can I say? The authority have been stamped that I'm a mm. wife to my husband. Mm. So that's what I was, by then I was very happy for that. And my eyes were open and knew, oh, Kumbe was living in darkness. But now I've seen the light. 
So, 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 do you now realize that there was something you were missing? Yes, yes. When, when the bride was yes, not paid. Dad. So, what will you say to women who, who feel that they, who, who feel the way you were before? Okay. <laughs> I can just tell them just to, okay, to open up their minds and their hearts to know that being uh, to be paid to be paid bride by bride by your husband is a very honorable thing, and there's a blessing. Uh, being your husband paying for you bright price. Yeah. Sorry. And, uh, yeah, there is a blessing for your husband to pay for you bright price and to be mm. honorable even to your family and your friends. That's mm. what I can say that. So, so you feel a sense of honor? Yes, yes. A, a, a sense of honor? Yes, Wow. Sir. Put your hand together for this blessed couple. You know, to me, God is like arranging this talk show because I didn't plan. You, you, do you see the issues we are handling? The first one, cross-cultural, this one is not bright price. And we know it's an issue here in Kenya where people feel that, like some of us knows we have been insulted. There are, somebody came to my office one time telling me what another person insulted me and said, and the person left the church. That one I was not even aware. Because I asked them to pay bright price of their wives. But we thank God that we have people who have obeyed the word of the Lord and they have seen the difference. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So God bless you, sir. As we call in the next couple. God bless you richly. God bless you. Put hands together for them as they go back. Hallelujah. So let me call the brother, the lady on red, you and your husband. <laughs> you can come. Let's have a talk. Then why um, Alex and the wife should be getting ready? You, you people are young, young couples, so you have something to say to the young couple. Put hands together for them as they are coming. Yeah, God bless you. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah, you can have your seat. God bless you. Yeah. I think this is yours. Come, let me give her that. Yes. Introduce yourself. Let's begin with the lady. Then the gentleman. Yes. Praise God. I'm Eunice Munga. Okay. <laughs> Family, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, my name is uh, Justice Munga. This is my wife. All right. Now, let's begin the era of salvation. When did you got when did you get born again? Salvation. Let me begin with the, with your wife. When do you get saved? Salvation. Okay. I got saved after marriage. It was Sorry, in, after marriage. Yes. All right. It was in two thousand and five. Okay. So for how long have you been married? For 21 years. Wow. 21. Okay. So you got born again in 2005. Okay. So. Uh, I was born again. Uh, let me call it born again, but it's not a, a born again as such. <laughs> because when I, I take the revelation of the word from our dad here, I may call myself then a stupid. <laughs> because the word stupid ran into my life until once upon a time I went to, to introduce my wife that uh, I had found a man in the city. Surely I have to introduce to you. Because now if not introducing you, uh, the man of God in town, we will die in a dead church here at our local church wow. so uh, fully I may say that uh, I came uh, I was born again in the year 2019 when I came in to, the, to join this family <laughs> let me say the truth Amen. now let's talk about marriages now from, from your experience people have been together for 21 years was uh, from your experience in marriage what do you have to tell this current generation maybe we'll begin with the lady what will you tell the current generation about getting the right person in marriage okay in marriage there are so many challenges first when we got our firstborn we got twins uh that was in 2002 wow. and i found it as a challenge because i never knew how to take care of, uh, of children for it was my firstborn, 
but this man was always there for me. He used to help uh, to assist me in the house cause because I could. It was very hard for me to take care of those kids because they were so young. There was nobody uh, except my husband. I was always, he was always on duty, so I found it a challenge. But uh, because he uh, he had I had promised that he would help me, then he was there for me. Wow. Let's put hands together for that. Which means the husband, she also got the support of the other couple. Remember the other couple? Yes. Now, um, we, which means there are challenges in marriage. That's why you prepare the young person coming up. But in terms of uh, what was it that convinced you to say yes to him when he asked your hand in marriage? Okay, as for me, I, for the first time he came to me, proposed to me, I look, just looked at him. I, I took some time to think about it, but then I saw that there was something in him that was special to me. Because he was open, he told me everything that uh, I had gone through, he told me everything about his life, his future, and that is why I, I, I found that God had brought the right man into my life. Now, there was a statement you made that you, uh, he, when he proposed to you, you took your time to, to pray. What will you talk about ladies who are desperate? That somebody just proposed, they just said yes. <laughs> okay. okay. If, for those who are single or for those who are waiting for the Lord, I think the, the Lord's time is the best. So let them, wait for, uh, let them wait upon the Lord and God will bring them the right people in their life. Okay. Now, sir, we come to you. Yes, what will you tell the next, the upcoming ones? Uh, the upcoming ones, if I may uh, put my advice, uh, marriage actually is a journey. And uh, if you may hear all the teachings that reign, marriage matters. I think it is your time, it is your best time to attach yourself because this is not a man's journey it is a god journey mm -hmm. so whatever you do as a young lady uh, out there there is so many challenges there are people who are even standing outside there are full of the spirit of darkness they want only to do what they can do in your life so that uh, your destiny may fall apart so uh, stay put with the word of God because the word of God will always uh, uh, tell you what to do, what, uh, whatever you are, uh, you are supposed, uh, you are supposed to, uh, uh, to follow. Uh, we thank God, let's thank God for our dad and mom here because I know we all, we are all here. But it is not in vain. We are coming from different culture, from different uh, places, only to come to be processed for the destiny. Everybody has a purpose. I had a purpose in life. Yes, as my wife had said here, he looked me into, it, uh, as her perspective looked, yes, I was, I, was, uh, I was open to her. And then out of it, she chose what he, uh, he, he chose himself for me uh, but actually we were not uh, abiding in the, in, in, the, in the full in the spirit but through the teachings I can say even the charlatans there, there, is a, there, there are in a problem <laughs> surely Thank now, you. Now, let me ask another question. Maybe the last one. Then we'll entertain the next couple. You've been, at, at, at least each of your response have always uh, brought in matters of church, uh, where you were and where you are right now. What, what will you uh, tell maybe a young couple or upcoming people that want to get married about the role of a good church? In terms in in, their, in a married in, in one's marital life, the role of a good church in one's marital life because we we find that a lot of churches are, are really bad and it's affecting the lives the marital lives of people. Yes, maybe from your own experience, 
what being a good church can help? Uh, from my own experience, uh, if I may say to the, to the young ladies who opt to marry, maybe the next, uh, the next coming moment of their lives, uh, I'd wish to tell them that they have to look and put themselves into a good church. Because mostly uh, the churches that, that are around far off ours here, uh, they are not the churches that they can mold you. They are not the churches that the message you get from them, they can touch your innermost life that uh, uh, can purport your, uh, your purpose, your will, and the destiny that you, uh, that you want to, uh, uh, to be. So, uh, in short, I would say that uh, God must process you. You have to be in the spirit so that you get a man in the spirit. Because without being in the spirit, surely you will be deceived outside there. Even the pastors, even the, uh, the prophetess, they are there. I think we crowd the spirit family we have a very big testimony everybody here has a testimony so uh, we have to open our eyes open your eyes and see your destiny open your eyes and see whatever uh, uh, comes before you as my friend there says not all glitters is uh, God. is God wow. so you have to think twice open your eyes and see and and, 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 and focus and to, and, to, and to Jesus Christ so that the light can be put in you to see whatever you may see, you may be comfortable because the rate of Christ, when it, it, it falls on you, I think you'll be having no problem. Our dad and mom here shall be having no problem in answering our question because all whatever he teaches, uh, all whatever uh, he teaches, uh, it touches our lives, it touches whatever uh, uh, whatever we uh, 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 our lives are uh, supposed to uh, to be, so uh, I say thank you for that uh, uh, for that short advice for you who are coming because it is not easy for uh, for us to stay in a, in, in a relationship for 21 good years. Yeah, it's the grace of God. Put that together for Jesus for that. I will have asked one more thing, maybe to your wife before we release you. You know. For a woman to have, uh, there are cases where a woman is in the right path, the husband is not. You know, maybe the husband is not safe, the wife is safe, and things like that. So, what, how do you feel for you and your family to be in one church? I feel great. Okay. So, what are the positive things that you've seen? Maybe, has it helped your family in any way? Like in unity and everything? It has, it has helped me a lot. Because um, through your teachings, he has always been teaching me about what he, what he learns in the church. And even our family comes together, uh, especially during the evenings before we, go, before we go to sleep. We have a prayer session, wow. then we go to sleep. Wow. Put that together for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God bless you, sir. So maybe we give time to the next people. Thank you for for what you've shared, help her collect that. God bless you. Yes. Now, uh, we need a younger couple now. Alex, you are your wife, you can't come. <laughs> God bless you. Let me ambush you people. Put time together for that. <laughs> because we have listened to people that have been on ground for 21, 25. Let's see the son of men. What are you were here before John the Baptist came? <laughs> Put, uh, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. You're welcome. You can have that. Yes, you're welcome. So introduce yourself. Let's begin with the lady. Praise God, church. My name is Inflesha Malova. We've been married for 13 years. Thank God. Let's hear the lesson. <laughs> but uh, you are the current generation. I don't have one of the previous. Uh, yes. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, my name is uh, Alex Malova. As, I hope this mic is working. Yeah. Okay. As she has said, we've been married for 13 years. 
we have uh, blessed with two boys with anger. All right. Yes. Now, you know, this generation has uh, more pressure than the one that our brother and our sisters have been sharing. Yes. Somebody who, who met 25 years ago, 21 years ago, is not now. So your own could just be the current thing. And there's a lot of pressure that is on marriages. So how have you guys survived the pressure of this generation of marriage? I begin with your wife. Uh, for us to, to be here, it has not been easy. Um, but when we came here five years ago, we find peace. But before, it was not easy. In fact, I even didn't know I was in co cohabitation. Let's put that together for Jesus. That is the difference that Christ can make. I didn't yes. know I was living in our cohabitation because we just met when we were working together at the airport. We just we were just going in and out. Then we found ourselves that today I'm in your house and I'm there. And <laughs> I look at the analysis. <laughs> then I found myself. Yes. <laughs> you see, the current generation is different. We, don't, we don't, this generation normally finds itself. But the other previous generation, <laughs> you understand? That's what we need to hear. So that they will teach the young ones how to survive. You get my point? With their own experience. Yes. But, but after we came here, that's now we, we noticed that we are not living well from the teachings that you are teaching. Then we started arranging the plans. And since then, it has been well. We found peace in our marriage. We are very fine. We thank God. Wow. Put that together for Jesus. So from, from what she said, from the wife perspective, surviving the pressure is through the light of God's word. The light of his word and being in the right church also, like what the previous couple said. Yes, the challenges as a man. What do you have? Uh... Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I will say as a, as a young man, it is not easy because, uh, you know, peer pressure has a way of challenging a man. You want to run with your boys. You want to be at the same level with people who are far beyond you. So sometimes as a young man, you try to, you know, you want to go clubbing. You want to go do other things. But uh, we thank God for our coming here was a, was a rescue. Actually, if not for our coming here, we wouldn't be together by now. I will say that. Are you really it clapping really well to the, for the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. Though, though our marriage has a... Okay, we used to work together in the same company. So we bought the bus to the place of work in the evening. We are coming together, all that happening. So one day uh, we were coming back from work and it was raining. So she, she's, you know, we alighted at the same place and her, where she was living was far, so my place was closer to <laughs> Do you see what, do you see the difference Jesus. between the previous generation and the current generation? The previous generation, they met yes. a woman with a Bible in her hands. Yes. The current generation, the same boss, it was raining. And we move. And we move. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is one thing led to the other. Yes. But uh, when I realized that uh, <laughs> now this is my girlfriend, I had to take the step of you know visiting because she was staying with the uncles. So I went to see the uncles. Uh, I took her to our, the place we were going to church. So it, maybe I will say our pastor did not. If it was you, you would have told us, you know, the right thing to do. So me, I took her to the church and I introduced her as a visitor as and my girlfriend. So when we left the church, we went to my place. So I was, you know, <laughs> me, I thought... Wait, 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 wait yes. let me ask you a question. With, with what, let's say you came to my office. Yes. And to this answer, what do you think will have happened? Oh, you, I know you tell me. You want to, <laughs> I know you will tell me you need to do this. You know you have to arrange for the wedding. You need to plan all this. But that was different, you know. Okay. So they prayed for us and we left. Wow. So that is what the church. I, I, I think. They, no, they were praying for visitors. 
Okay, so they prayed officer. for the visitors the and we left as as and and went to the same house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we, that is how we, we began. Wow. But thank God, uh, you know, you you have guided us to do the right thing and God has really been faithful. Wow. Yes. Let's put that together for Jesus. <laughs> now, before, before you found the, the light, yes. when people say five years ago, so which means 13 minus 5, Yes. Is eight. Eight years. Which means for eight years you were together living with the quality of light you have as in the understanding yes. that you have before. So so because right now you must have realized certain dangers mm -hmm. that can threaten a marriage. Exactly. At the, when you were on the other side. So can you help somebody to understand? Maybe the young generation, when you're coming to marriage, here are the things that could threaten uh -huh. Some challenges you don't have to overcome. Some yes. things that will be there. Uh, temptations, trials, exactly. openings, and all of that. So maybe we'll begin with your wife. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, for ladies, uh, before you step into a marriage, you must understand yourself first. Because when I, I went into marriage, I didn't know my position as a woman in a marriage. I just got into a marriage and everything was just <laughs> not in order. So I could try, but things were not okay because I didn't know what is marriage and what is my responsibility, what are my duties. So those were most challenges. Then later, after we were blessed with children, it was very, even very hard to handle the children because we, were not, we, are, we didn't have any teachings on how to raise the children. But later on, when we came here, we, things are falling in order every time we come here. Wow. So, which, which really means uh, what really was lacking then was the knowledge. Of, uh, no, you have the good heart. You had what you wanted to do. Yes. You, you, let's say you knew better. You would have been... Uh, now, what, uh, what are the few things you've learned so far here? That has helped you in your marriage before I come to you. As a woman, that has helped you to be the ideal woman, to recognize your position because you spoke about position. What are the things you've learned that have helped you now? Okay. Uh, you apply them and they help you have a perfect home. First, I know my position. I'm a woman, what I need to do. Secondly, as we come here, he knows where to touch, where not to touch. And also, what we have learned after coming here, we know how, how to raise a family. Mm. Yes. In fact, we, we've, been, we've been, I think we've been doing counseling to some, some young couples, even others who are older than us out there. We can go wow. and counsel them. Mm. Wow. Yes. So they, they will come to you to seek counsel. Wow, beautiful. Mm. Okay, yes. The same question. That the challenges, the hazards. Let me respond to what she said. Yeah. There's a there's a couple actually came to, for us to you know to be you know when you are doing a wedding the people need to be at your back. Okay. So where we came from is like those people have to be they have to also have wedded. So yeah. they thought we have also wedded because of the way we carry ourselves, you know, we are going together to church, when you go shopping, you go together, that unity in the family. Mm. So they came to our house thinking that, oh, these guys, the way they carry themselves, maybe they, they have done a wedding, you know, they, are, they have gone through all these, uh, and we told them, no, it's just uh, where we worship, it has cultured our, you know, mm. marriage to, you know, to, to live this way. Wow, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh... Yeah. That is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, what, you, what will you want um, a young couple who have not brought their marriage into Christ, the way you people brought yourself into Christ? They are living in the kind of darkness you lived before. What, what kind of a thing would they face? What kind of a marriage would they have? It is a, I would say it's a very dangerous marriage because of my past experience too. Before and uh, after i can tell there is a very very big difference there is no fear of god in you you know you can you you feel like you're on top of the world you feel like you can do anything mm. you know you want to do but when you come to christ the, you are restricted of doing some things mm. apart from just the the fear of god in you there is the fear of of yourself even where you worship 
you mm. feel like if I do this, I might be, you know, I, I putting uh, like, you know, the in image. Quote, the image of the church, mm. like uh, into a different perspective. So mm. there's that fear in you that I cannot be found in this place. I cannot be seen doing this. I cannot be, you know, and the, that fear of God in you just, wow. I have to live my life this way. That's, yes. That is, that is mm. awesome. No. I want to, okay, let's put that together for, for The final question I want to ask, maybe our sister. Will you, what will you tell ladies as the greatest insurance for your husband? Ladies who are afraid of losing their husbands. What is the greatest insurance to make sure that you don't lose your husband? <laughs> From your experience. I'm asking you. You are looking at him to give you the answer. <laughs> What's the greatest insurance? Because for what the two of you have shared, I've already discovered it. I've already discovered from what the two of you have shared. Because you say those couples were watching you people, those intended couples, moving together, doing your things together. And you said there's a huge difference between then and now. So where does a lady need to put her husband to make sure the husband remains loyal to God and loyal to her? I think it's submission. When you submit to a man, everything, he will love you and everything will be fine. Wow. Do you, did you hear that? And you're not clapping. <laughs> now, yes, what this? Because there is one I discovered from what people are saying and you know it. It's just that you don't know it. You know, you know it and you don't know it. So say it. <laughs> well, for what you guys have said, I discovered that the best way ladies can ensure their husband is to put them in Christ. If the husband is in Christ, as in a, it's also in a good church, a church where they teach the fear of God, all of that stuff, the man is she's secured. You get my point? Because these days, one of the major problems among young couples is that insecurity. The older ones seem to have security, the young ones do not have. And I know you people have battles with that. So how did you overcome that? Maybe let me give you a little time more. The insecurity, yes. Maybe you the man you can talk. For, for now, I wouldn't say there is insecurity. But no, I mean then, it then, was, yes. Then it was, then it was uh, like uh, since, uh, you know, the time you are coming even to the house, when you are leaving, the way you are busy with your phone, the way you are doing things, it was suspicious to her. But now she is not like, uh, who are you calling, you know, where are you going? Those kind of questions he never asked before. Because, because you know, there is that uh, devotional lifestyle in the mm, house mm, mm. that gives her security. Okay, that she doesn't point. have to, you know, to bother, be, herself. Uh, to bother herself. You know, like, who are you talking to now? You know, all those, those kind of questions. Wow. Out of that, uh, you know. Let's put that together for Jesus. Uh, Which means... Christ is the greatest security. Exactly. Christ, exactly. once it once comes into your family, mm -hmm. and you people build your lives around him, exactly. or you allow him to build himself around you people, mm -hmm. then some of these marital challenges that I people know. are having. Because if you look at it, mm -hmm. a lot of homes, exactly. that is one major problem. Mm -hmm. a, a, a whole lot. So for God to help you to overcome that is a treasure. Exactly. So what last would you say to advise those who are coming to marriage? Yes, our sister, before you go back. Those who are intending to come in marriage, make sure you are well prepared because in every marriage there are challenges. Whether you are born again or not, there are challenges. But the way you will handle them when they come, that is what matters a lot. So when you are, you are in Christ, as Dada has said, it will be very simple and very easy for you to, ha to, cha to handle the challenges when they come. But in marriage, there is no any marriage that doesn't have any challenge. Yes. God bless you. Put her together for her sister. Yes. Cancer. Okay. Uh, I will advise the, the young girls and uh, boys that uh, marriage is, is not uh, something you, you, know, you wake up and say you have fulfilled. It's something you build over, over time. As she has said, there are challenges that you have to overcome and, you know, pray over it. We, I will not say we don't have issues. We have to quarrel a bit, you know, 
the salt, the dress, the time and everything. But there is a way, you know, Christ crisis, has a way of, management. you know, yeah. this second, everything is settled. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you, you are all together doing other things. So I will encourage the young girls and boys to be patient in the Lord. They are very lucky they are here. Things will be done in order. So for them, the foundation will be okay. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you richly for coming, Amen. for Thank sharing. You. Thank you, sir. Your... Put your hands together for them. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, now, th those that we prayed for today, uh, they have all left. Okay. I wanted one of them to come. And uh, so that, so maybe. <laughs> okay. Distribute. They, they thank God that these people are left. So they have 19 crates of. Uh, of soda, so double portion. I don't know where you will start. <laughs> Praise God. So, um, uh, okay, maybe a brother folding your hands. Do you have your wife with you? Yes. Sorry? She was there. Where did she go? Okay, let's call another. Okay, she's, she's not around. Okay, let me call another younger couple. Uh, George, you and your wife, you can come. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, sons of men sharing the so that I hope the 19 crates will go around. Okay, those who, who have been patient to stay with us, God bless you. Maybe if I've known, I would have asked the boss to come by five to pick those that are going, then those of us that are hanging around. But I saw a lot of people. Sorry, oh, the boss is it has arrived. Okay, is that why some people are going out? <laughs> Fine. Yes, you're welcome. Yes, this is the first time we are having a talk on uh, this. So let's begin. Introduce yourself with your wife. Let's begin, let's begin with the, our sister. Yes. Your, that mic is off. It's on. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jerusha. Uh, this is my husband. You've been married for how long? Okay, I don't know whether to say we are... No, just add including the other one. Okay. <laughs> what I'm trying to say... Yes. I okay, how long have you been living together? We have been living together for about eight years. Good. So yes, you have yes, that the is question. what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you got it right when... Which year did you do get it properly? Not yet. That is what I Okay, okay, I get the say. point. Okay, but he has started the process. Yeah, yes, All right, I remember you told me. Okay, fine. I think this will help those who are also at your level who have started the process but they have not completed the process. That's good. Now, introduce yourself also. Living in family. Uh, my name is George Minor. I thank the Lord to be here. Uh, as my wife has said, we have been together for eight years. And thank God for the trial of the spirit ministry because it's when we came here that we actually understood that we, are, we were in a chaotic union. And thank God because through our dad, he showed us the way to put things in order. And by his grace and his marvelous help, we are in the process. I have already started the process and though I have not yet completed, We'll get there. Yeah. Now, this, uh, at this set, set, we're going to talk to believers like you who never knew. Because you cannot be better than the church you attend spiritually. That is the truth. So when you found the Lord, you, you people were not taught as in, this is the right way to get and stay married. Yes. You came here and discovered it and you are now in the process. There are many others also who have discover the same thing but some of them have gone to the extreme of okay let's divorce let us go back to it then we can now build so how what will you say to such people maybe with you okay to me what i can say is just to uh, to be patient and to follow the process to, to follow the right process to make things in order because um, okay, what I can say is that marriage, 
without Christ, Christ is just crisis. There is no peace at all. You can't get peace outside Christ. So uh, in marriage, you have to get things in order when you get the knowledge of how to do things. Because um, the church we went after coming together, we were just told about just the marriage certificate, not about the, the, the bride price. So we were thinking about the, the marriage certificate, how to get it. You, the pastor was telling us that you, you just go to, you just come to church so that if, when you get, when he give, he give you the marriage certificate, you will be secure just than, rather than going outside to get, to get it to, from the, from the, 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 the yes. Okay. Now, yes, you, what do you have to say about the same question? Uh, what I would say, if, if you are wrong, and God in his mercy, because it is actually an act of mercy, even for you to realize that you are wrong, hmm. you are supposed to see it as an opportunity that God has shown you to make things right before you actually go to face it. So if you are soon here, you went wrong, and you want to run away from it. You are actually not running away from it. You are running into your own judgment. Wow. So I would, advise, I would advise anybody who you are wrong, and now through maybe divine teachings, you have realized that this is not right. You don't just say, OK, let's just continue like that, as if nothing has happened. This may not have happened in time past, but the mercy of God may, may still have maybe kept your, like our dad has taught us, it is a process before you are, the, the, the judgment comes. Or the sentences against anything wicked do not necessarily come swiftly. But if you are shown the right way to go about it, and you are burdened, then you will have yourself to blame. It's good you embrace it because it's for your own good. Just like the way the Bible puts it, if, if you are righteous, it is not benefiting God, it is you. So even when you are shown how to make things right, and you think that, like, sorry to say this, but when I hear that there are people that, like, they are blaming our dad at, when he has shown them the way, you are supposed to go and pay the bride price, and you start saying that, oh, he is forcing you, or you think it's something bad, you are just stupid, because... Whatever you are being shown is for your own good. So if you are to go and make that, that process right, you are actually made in ways with God. It's like you are being shown how are you supposed to repent and how to put things in order, or you be reconciled to God. So whatever you are directed, please do it. Don't run away from it. That's what I would advise anybody who has been shown that. Now, the... the the issue of coming to find out that where you are is wrong and you need to make it straight. There are some people who have the challenge of um, the challenge of um, do we keep living together after we have found out? Let's assume somebody doesn't have the money for the bride price immediately. Then I'm, they are in, in a fix of do we keep living together or we need to separate until we pay the bride price? <laughs> what, from your experience, what is what do you think is the best way to approach that? Uh, yeah, you, okay. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I would say, because from what you what you have taught us, uh, once once you are living together, first of all, check check that union because it, it is something that I would say it is something. First of all, there will be like a conviction from the spirit mm. whether this thing is right in the first place. Whether are you are you supposed to make to make it even right, or are you supposed to completely go away from it? Because if if there is oppression, from what I have understood, if there is oppression, or one couple is suffering from it, mm -hmm. and you actually it's like let me put it this way, it is like an oppression chamber for you, whatever you are calling you know. And now you have realized in the first place, this is not even marriage. You are calling it marriage. And now you, want, you have been shown even how to make things right. Making them right will not solve the problem. Mm. But if, if, there, if it was just the normal issues maybe you are having, 
and you realize that okay maybe from the way we have been living together we don't have a lot of problems it is just this much more issues then what is lacking what was lacking then and it was maybe the revelation of how you are supposed to go about it then you can go ahead and put things right mm. but if that thing it is something that it is just the mercy of god that it was it has not destroyed you even to the point where you have come to see the revelation mm. it's better you just don't say that oh maybe it is just because i have not put this in order if i put this in order maybe this will work no it is there should be that conviction of the spirit first of all from within so that even as you move in the process of putting things in order it will be okay then another thing i would say if now you are to move and put things in order that is now going to pay the bright price yes it is not necessary that you have all the money but the key thing do you have that heart or do you have the revelation of why you are doing this because if you have it okay let me use my example uh what happened i i, I, I did not have the entire amount even when i began the process but first of all i went to my in-laws okay we had met earlier but we had not actually negotiated about it we had done all the introduction and all that but the bride price we had not negotiated so i went there first of all i went and repented before my father in luna i went and repented and i well, showed put him together for jesus for that i know i wronged you and also the 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 brothers to the father in law now the uncles mm. they were there so i repented before them and i asked for forgiveness and now i told them now i'm ready to make things right when they gave me now the whatever i'm supposed to to pay i also requested because i requested that maybe if you could allow me to be going bit by bit mm. which they allow wow. so i would advise anybody because now that is what is helping me even to continue the process if you go if, if you don't have the entire money you don't you don't just sit and say now you are looking for the entire money start the process go negotiate with them and if if you are right god will help you if you are right god will help you and you will finish up the process you don't wow. have hard on it yes. let's put our hand together for jesus christ yes let me hear from you also yes i want them to say as he has said yes paying brand price will not be a problem to you if you have good relationship with in-laws mm. because when my husband um, said that he want to go home in fact they were blaming me they called me to ask me whether i'm giving him pressure to go home <laughs> and, they are, and they understand our situation at the moment i, I try to explain to them that i'm not the He's one born out of revelation him. yes i i try to explain to them so even even uh, the other day i was talking with my elder brother and he was telling me if there is marriage blessing we can just he was telling me to talk to you but i was trying to show him that there is a need for us to complete, complete the process, the process yeah. but so paying the bride price is not a problem if you have the, the heart to do it and it is necessary yes well and, and there's something also you mentioned <coughs> it, as in having a, a dis discovering that this marriage will work before you proceed to pay the bride price because when you discover that this thing was not even a marriage in the first place so to make it right you must know to me your wrong gave you opportunity to rewrite the story to discover can we really go on in this thing because it's not, it's not about the bride price like you said because because it's about the character of the people and uh, you, you people are living together can you carve out a peaceful home because you don't beautify where there's no house in the first place so 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 you were able to observe from your period of staying together and your conviction of the spirit you were able to know okay this thing will work we're not going to have issue when we go to pay the bright price and complete the process now um, so now that you've started the process how did you feel when you took the first step uh I can the word that I can say is that I felt I felt first of all I felt happy and then I felt another dimension of peace come into my life wow. knowing that now at least I have started this process of making ways with God because for one this thing I, I I thank God because I saw it as also an opportunity of God now teaching even my siblings mm. back at home because no, yeah, like my wife and dad previously say, most of the pastors, 
They don't understand what is marriage. So even what they tell you, they just give you nonsense and uh, try to show you what you need, a certificate and all that. So you find that so even they, in your they dwell on certificate. Yeah. <laughs> you see? So even you find that even in our home, even what whoever is being described as married, if you bring them under the, the world. truth, you see, it is not married. But through that event, I saw it like an opportunity for God because my parents were there. So I saw it as an opportunity also for God to begin to shed his light in my family. So I felt happy and I felt another dimension of peace come into my life. And I thank God that I, I am still progressing on. So, uh, sister, yes, what do you feel as a, as a woman when you see he made that first trip and uh, started the process? Yes. Okay, I can say I felt very good. I felt very more secure because now at least he has started the process. You know, sometimes you may have, uh, you may say that we are together, but you don't know. That is when I felt more secure when I, I, I saw the seriousness in him to start the process even when we, we were in tight situations. Yeah. So I felt good and I thank God for, for, for the way we are progressing. Wow. Yes. Well, finally, as we bring this to a close, um, it's important for everybody to understand that uh, the pattern for marriage is Christ and the church. Yes. And Christ did not carry the church on the street. He paid the price. He died on the cross to purchase the church. So this is where everybody intending to get married, he must also pay the price. A man, there's a cross to die. That cross is called Bright Price Cross. So if they say the money is huge, just negotiate with your in-laws and let them lower it for you so that and, read, and make it easy for you. Now, why their own is going the way it's going because they were living together before and they had children. So under that process, you don't scatter the home. You rather build. You get my point. You build from where God met you. And you keep moving bit by bit until you pay the bright price. But for a single person who have never married before, don't come and say today is revelation. I will carry the woman and put in my house. Then we start doing it bit by bit. No, it is called fornication. That is called rebellion. <laughs> I just you have to stay away, she stay away until the pastor pronounces your husband and wife. You are not permitted to go and live together. So I believe that we have all been enlightened by the non, by the couples who sat here. So let's put our hand together for all of them who sat here and we share these things. So uh, maybe what we, what we'll do now is just to wrap up with a short word of prayer, and uh, we we call off a, call it a day for today. And thank you for your patience and for being with us. And uh, please, we want to appeal: nobody should break those bottles. Don't uh, drink it and forget that it's a bottle and think it's something to chew. <laughs> because we need to return the bottles and collect our money. There was money we gave them to secure the bottles. Do you understand me? God bless you. Let's be honest. Thank you for coming. God bless you for sharing with us. Put hands together for this wonderful couple. Hallelujah. God bless you for coming to sit on the chair. Put hands together. <laughs> so get me my pulpit back, please. Let's close the service. Hallelujah. Those of you who are patient enough to wait, we will have added more people, but maybe the rest of the couples who are going to call you for, for shows. You get my point? So I can see Pastor Philip, Philip and the wife is there. We see some of our brothers. So maybe doing shows, we'll call you people and we have a talk. Let's bow down ahead in prayer. Father, we thank you for the mercy that you have given us for today's service, how you have visited us from morning till this very evening. Thank you for the prayer session that you empowered uh, mom to pray. Thank you for empowering the praise team, uh, Betty and the group. Thank you for the instrumentalists and for the ushers and all the workforce anointing all of us to work today and giving us the energy to get to the end. Thank you for the wonderful couples that you bless their marriages today and those who are on their way coming. Thank you for the singles that you visited, renewing their mantles. Thank you for everyone that you touched today. Help us, O oh God, to retain these impartations in the name of Jesus. We commit this week into your hands. We pray, O oh God, and let it be a blessed week for every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, briefly, while you are standing, I want to announce this by Wednesday, 
We're having a service 6 p.m. Friday also 6 p.m. Do you understand that? Yeah. Last week, why we didn't hold it? Because it is very good that after sitting down for eight days, you go through your notes again. You get my point? Not that I cannot teach you. I can. But I don't want to run over uh, what you learned before. So giving that time for you to sit down and look at the word is very important. So better on Wednesday will be here, 6 p.m. Friday will be here. I think this Friday is the first Friday of the month, is that? Okay, we'll have a vigil instead. Is it not better? Yeah. So it's going to be a vigil on Friday. So we'll send text messages to remind all of us. So please but tell your friends, invite your friends. You get my point. Not just it's not just for only church members. Invite your friends, invite everybody and let them attend. The buses will be available at Kencom, the proper time. I think it's from is it seven or what? Where is Bro Steve? Okay, it's not around. Uh, is it uh, the, the bus, Friday VG, what time will the bus be there? 7 p.m.? Okay, 7 to what time? 9.30? Okay. So 7 to 9.30 p.m., the buses will start bringing people. Those of you that want to come here earlier than that, no problem, you can come and relax and prepare yourself. A few announcements here is, uh, um, okay, I think I will do this by, by next week because some of these things, there's no time for it. So on the uh, members who joined the ministry, our new members who joined the ministry, we're going to have a meeting on the 19th of November around 1 p.m. on Saturday. So we'll have a meeting with all of you to talk to you about the ministry. And those of you that want to serve in different areas, we can introduce you to those areas and have you serve there. So we'll repeat this announcement ne next Sunday. And all the messages that have been preached are all available and uh, you can pick them let's pray father we, we pray oh god for our children we pray oh god for our children we pray that you put a cover over their lives as they play wherever they go wherever they drink wherever they take sanctify it oh god let there be no incident and let there be no accident even as we go home cover every one of us take us home safely lord bring us back on wednesday and bring us back on friday to the glory of your name in jesus name we pray Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Let's sing our covenant song. God is building a people of power. God is building a people of praise who will walk through this land by His Spirit and will glorify His precious name. Build your church. Build your church, Lord. Make us church. Join our hands, join our hands, Lord, with your song, with your song, make us one, make us one, Lord, with your song, with your song,
content of this song made manifest in your church global to the glory of your name in jesus name we pray god bless you have a great week thank you for participating with us in our live service be sure to join us again next time keep watching morning cloud tv the morning cloud television The nation's our mandate. Making the much needed difference in a terminal generation.